Some of your plants might not be looking their best currently and you might be wondering why or where you might be going wrong. Hopefully I might be able to help out by showing you and explaining to you what's happening to my plants at home. So why might some of your plants be looking a little down or worse for wear? It's winter and personally winter can be a bit of a struggle for me so imagine how your plants might be feeling. Um, there's a lot less light so like many of us who slow down in winter so will your plants. Light is one of the main factors for plant growth. So less light, less photosynthesis, and the less your plants are gonna be growing. With a reduction of growth, this also means your plant plants aren't using up as much water. Therefore, your plant needs a lot less water during the winter months than in the summer. Uh, I also would like to point out that if your plants are still actively growing in the winter months, you can usually keep up a normal routine. Uh, then there's some other factors that can affect plants, uh, a plant's health in winter. So you've got temperature and humidity. So you need to be a bit mindful of any cold drafts or sudden drop in temperatures. So if you think about it, we wouldn't go outside on a cold day without a jacket. So having plants near windows or if you're going to open up a window, you need to be mindful of that cold air coming in. Our plants are a lot more sensitive than what we are. Then we have the other side of the spectrum, where during winter we have our central heating on. Uh, this is okay for us, but for our plants this creates dry air and can be a bit more of a problem, problem for our tropical plants uh, than kind of our cacti and succulents. So if you think about it, tropical plants are from warm, humid climates where there's not much fluctuation in their conditions. This is far from the environment in our homes. Um, so dry air, it causes leaves to crisp up, it can interfere with, interfere with the plant's transpiration. So plants with finer leaves normally need a humid, a more humid environment to kind of help with transpiration um, and keeping them luscious. So I'm going to show you some examples of my plants um, and explain what I believe is going wrong with them. So first off is my Maranta, which is this guy here. Um, and you can see plenty of stress marks on the leaves. Um, this plant was situated in my back room here, um, which in winter gets really cold and I'm absolutely freezing today. Um, uh, so these stress marks could be for a number of reasons. Um, so as I mentioned, it's been cold in this back room, so there has been a drop in temperature. Um, in kind of autumn, we do open up our back window, so there could be a, a bit of a draft issue. Um, which could be causing these stress marks um, and because it is getting a bit colder um, it does mean that the potting medium isn't drying out as quickly um, which could start to asphyxiate the roots slightly. Um, it may also be that the plant is transpiring its chemicals through its leaves um, so plants don't always react well to our tap water and to kind of get rid of those chemicals, they will transpire them through the leaves and cause this kind of marking, um, which for some people it's a problem. I personally cannot be bothered to um, don't collect rainwater anymore. Um, so yeah, I use tap water on all of my plants. Um, or um, these marks could be down, I've sort of already mentioned draft, um, but lack of humidity. So these are real kind of like, jungle dwellers, so they're used to a lot of humidity. Um, so I have grouped it with some others, so fingers crossed it's going to enjoy it. So I think this is more of a combination of using tap water and the roots becoming slightly asphyxiated because I noticed that the medium wasn't um, drying out as quickly. Um, so I have aerated the compost slightly. Um, I also have now moved it into my living room. Um, where it's slightly warmer so it's going to be a little bit stressful but if you can see ooh, I have had some new growth so another one thing uh, plants can do in the winter period is uh, dropping or their leaves turn yellow um, this can happen quite suddenly or it can be a bit more of a gradual thing over time so I'm going to show you my Pilia granuloides this guy mm -hmm. and my Anthurian I can't really pronounce the species name, so I'm going to skip that bit. Um, so you can see with this anthurium, one of its lower leaves is turning yellow. Um, because it is a lower leaf, I'm not really too bothered, but I thought I'd kind of just maybe explain it a little bit more to you. 
So this kind of leaf might be yellowing one because it's react the plants reacting to the lower light levels um, and to try and conserve some energy for its other leaves because it's aborting one of the older leaves. Um, also plants do lose their bottom leaves as new ones come through so this for me isn't worrying at all. There are some other stress marks on this plant um, and I think this could be maybe down to either lack of humidity or the use of tap water. Um, again this plant was in my back room and I've now moved it to my living room where it's a lot warmer and it's kind of in a corner grouped and I need to kind of keep this sphagnum a bit moist, more moist on top so it stays a little bit more kind of like humid for it so hopefully it's going to be all right. Um, and then I thought I'd show you my pillow as well. So over summer this has had such a growth spurt. I mean it's really kind of like grown up tall and it's given off loads of babies and I've got is crazy um, so yeah it's had a really big growth spurt over summer um, and recently it has been dropping a lot of leaves um, because it has had a lot of new growth I have been expecting a bit of leaf drop um, but there has been especially from the mother plant a lot of leaf drop which is a little bit worrying um, so that could be happening down to the reduced light levels um, it could be the plant trying to preserve energy so it can put more energy later on into like the pups um, and, and I just find that these guys definitely prefer to be on the drier side during the winter months and don't like to be cold and wet at the same time um, so yeah I think again it's a bit normal I might have had some areas of keeping it a bit too too damp and wet, um, so I have kind of noticed that there are some kind of like blacker splodges on the back of some leaves, and that could be an indication that some of the roots have become slightly asphyxiated. Oh my god, I can't say now, asphyxiated. But there is new growth still coming through, which is awesome, and lots of babies too. Yay! Then some plants might actually go into full dormancy um, period, just like my alocasia poly, and it is looking really, really worse for wear. So I've had this plant for a few years now, and it's gone through a few winter periods, and, um, and I'll have to admit, every year it seems to go into full dormancy. So the plant um, has aborted all of its leaves, and it is pretty much reduced to just like these tiny little stumps. So once these kind of die back maybe a little bit more, I'll be inclined to kind of snip them back and then just leave it on the drier side, leave it on the very dry side, um, and then hope for the best. So the first year it happened, I did uh, repot this plant kind of in the winter months, which is a no, no. Um, then last year we moved in kind of October, and I think that stressed the plant out. So again, to conserve its energy, drop its leaves, go back to stumps, and then bam, spring it'll pop back. Um, so I think for me, this is going to be one of those plants that each winter, because I can't give it the right conditions, um, it's going to go into a full dormancy period. So you might need to expect that with some of your plants if you're not giving them the stable conditions that they need. And finally, let's talk about some cacti and succulents and how they might change and um, adapt over the winter months. So I find that um, succulents may even kind of change colour. Um, this, during the summer when it's receiving more light, goes a really nice kind of like deeper orangey kind of colour and you can kind of see some of the outer leaves with that. But during the colder seasons, um, it's kind of changed colour. Um, also, because the plants aren't receiving as much light, you will find that maybe some of them will grow a little bit more elongated. This is where they're kind of stretching up to the light to try and find the optimum light source to keep them, keep them going. So you can see that with this kind of succulent, I'm not sure the genus is the name of it. But the very kind of like top of it that you can see it's really starting to like stretch and elongate so 
you might even find a lot of your kind of cat tone succulents will go into a full dormancy period. And they require very little care. So um, water really only if your plant needs it. So if it's these kind of like nice fleshy leaves, they're starting to kind of pucker up a little bit. You can kind of see it with this um, water a little bit. It's, it's leaves are a little bit kind of like soft um, and not as fleshy. So he could probably do with the water at some point. Um, but only, only water them if they really need it. Water on warmer days. That is going to give the plant a little bit more time to soak it up and don't water it as deeply as you do in summer. These are from dry, arid environments. They're not used to being cold and wet. So yeah, after watering it, don't put it in somewhere cold and wet. I have lost many succulents from watering it and putting them back into their spot. Overnight, the temperature drops so dramatically and then I wake up in the morning and it's just a soggy mess, pretty much. Um, but saying that, I have got some succulents um, from the Warthia uh, genus that actually stay in their kind of southern hemisphere. Um, so they actually grow more during the kind of winter months than during our summer months when they actually go dormant. You can kind of see with this one, it's got a little flower stalk about to appear. These ones actually grow more in the winter than they do in our summer. And what other issues you might face? So during the winter months, pests should die off, but you might but might thrive in our homes over the winter months. Uh, the main culprits for this are fungal gnats and spider mites, really. Uh, you might sometimes experience thrips, um, but I find they only stay in our homes if you've had them during the summer. Uh, so fungal gnats are the main ones, and they are these tiny little black flies that are attracted to damp compost. So, um, this is a good indication that you're actually watering a little bit too much. So if you ease up from the watering, this will reduce the problem. But if you've got a really bad case, uh, you are gonna have to find some other solutions and you can just hit me up um, if you need any more help. Um, spider mites can be another issue, especially for kind of calathias, stenanthes, stenanthes and such, just because the air is a lot drier and these are the kind of conditions that they thrive in. So if that happens, wash your plant down uh, treat it with a weak soapy solution or use a pesticide or something, whatever is your preferred method. So let's round up and recap on what I have brought up in this video. So, during the winter months there is less light, which can put your plants into a full dormancy or even drop their leaves. Um, their leaves might become crispy, this can be down to a lack of humidity or a draft. Um, there is you might experience some blackening tips, uh, which could be down to the roots becoming asphyxiated. So aerate the compost, um, and that will allow oxygen back into the root system. If you'd like to see a video on that, just let me know and I can probably rustle one up for you. Um, or the blackening can be down to the plant transpiring chemicals from the tap water. Uh, you may experience some pests, those pesky uh, fungal gnats. Um, try and water on warmer days and don't keep your plants cold and wet at the same time. They are not going to like it. Do not repot in winter. It's too stressful for the plant. The plants aren't actively growing. They're not going to be putting roots out into that fresh compost. And therefore you are just putting a plant into soggy potting the medium and it's just going to stress it out too much. So just wait until spring. This list could really go on, but I'm gonna say a couple more things and then I'll be out of your ears, I guess, or eyes. Um, try not to move your plants around too much. It takes plants at least two weeks in the summer to acclimatize and um, establish themselves in their kind of position. So if you're constantly moving them around your flat or home, you're just stressing them out more. So try and find their spot and leave them there. You might find that your plants weep or cry. Um, that's to do with a little bit too much moisture, so, and the kind of temperature dropping, so try and, again, just water on those like warmer days. And if your plant is actively growing, you might find that some of the young growth doesn't make it, and that is kind of absolutely normal. Young and juvenile growth is not as strong and it's not as sturdy, so um, 
I expect it to happen. That is just gonna die off. It happens with my phlebodium all the time and that is still happening healthy. So hopefully you found this video useful and informative. Um, and I hope that it's gonna help with your plants over the winter months. Um, I am still working on loads of new botanical workshops for you guys. So this is gonna be, I'm gonna like go into more detail in my kind of like Houseplant 101 one. So keep an eye out for the workshops I will be releasing in the coming months. Um, if you've got any questions about this video or I might have missed something out, um, just leave a comment below or just shoot me a DM. I'm more than happy to help with your plants. So keep on growing guys and see you soon. Bye.